Europe's refugee crisis. Millions of people risking everything to find safety. Some are welcomed with open arms. Others face a difficult reception. People come to Europe from Syria, Afghanistan and Iraq and parts of Africa. And some protest against their arrival. Seeing them as strangers, their culture unfamiliar and alien. But the truth is, Muslims have been in Europe for centuries and there's no better place to see early Islamic influence than here in southern Spain. Compass is in Andalusia. It was here that Muslims from Arabia and North Africa arrived in the 8th century. They settled here and at its peak, the territory of Al-Andalus covered most of Spain. The period of human history that followed has become known as La Convivencia, which means the coexistence. Like any time in human history, it was complicated but it's often been seen as harmonious. To a large extent, there was a degree of tolerance. There was um, a living alongside each other of three big religions, of Christianity, Judaism and Islam. The fortress of Alhambra has stood, looking over the city of Granada for centuries. It's an astonishing and beautiful reminder of the impact of Islamic influence here, but it's only one part of the story. I want to go beyond Alhambra to discover the lasting impact on art and culture of the Muslim influence in Europe at that time. They brought lots of new crops, rice, uh, cotton, citrus fruits, pomegranates, figs, all those sorts of things they established in Spain and gradually they spread to the rest of Europe. I'll explore architecture, food, dance and music to see how the legacy of Islam in this land still lives on. I'll be speaking to the artists of Andalusia and asking if there's anything we can learn from this time of tolerance today when Europe can appear intolerant. We were able to create a society, very, very advanced society, and they left in the pages of history a really an important example. The lesson to be learned is respect. Join me on this episode of Compass as I visit Granada and the magnificent cathedral city of Cordoba to explore La Convivencia and the art of coexistence. In the shadow of the imposing palace of Alhambra, Granada's streets have stood for hundreds of years. Wafa Haraja is a tour guide here. She's agreed to show me around some of the less well-known spots in Granada. Now we are inside, actually, the entrance of one of the, whole, the old hotels of Granada, while talking about the 14th century. Nowadays, in Spanish words, we call it Alondiga Gedida, which came from the Arabic word al fundoq al jadid so it was a hotel. Are there some patterns or designs we can see repeated in the architecture here? Yeah, for example, we can see calligraphies, uh, especially the Kufi calligraphy, cursive calligraphies that we will see in other places. And uh, we see uh, leaves, motifs like, and we see geometric, geometric patterns. Islamic art and decoration doesn't use figures or people, but often uses repeated patterns they overlap and interlace, forming intricate and complex designs. Now that Wafa has pointed them out to me, I was seeing them everywhere. Do you think people cherish the Muslim legacy here? If we talk about Muslims, yes, obviously when, when they come. I work with Muslims and whatever they come here, like, oh my God, they, they belong to Muslims. So. It's like, wow, look where, where we were. Knowing that nowadays, knowing that nowadays, we're like, if we see a Muslim life and we see what is happening in the Muslim world, it's like, what's happening? What's wrong with us? What lessons do you think we can learn from the convivencia period? So there was like such um, 
a respect of their belief because in Islam we cannot force someone to get to convert to Islam. Islam is about tolerance, it's about respecting others. We talk about how to live in this world, respecting what is in this world, when we, the, create, the creation and even the space, and also respecting the, 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 the human beings. How about non-Muslims? What can they learn from La Convivencia? That they were respected here, and they were not living here as like as as the other. They lived here as the people of the book. So uh, I see that if we don't go back to that period, they will never know who Muslims are. I understand that if you if you look in the Muslim world, you will see, oh my God, this is a chaotic world. But at that time, it was not. Walking through these narrow streets, you can see so much of the architecture and design Wafa was mentioning. Even in these artworks on display in these shops, you can see the beautiful geometric patterns. Islamic artists have been incorporating these shapes into their works for centuries. Just around the corner, I'm about to meet a modern day artist who's doing exactly the same. Munira Mandonka is an American who came to Spain as a traveler 40 years ago and never went back. She makes handcrafted leather goods using ancient techniques from the 9th and 10th century, a time when the craftsmanship of Andalusia was at its peak. This is called uh, tooled and carved leather. And my teacher was the last one of Granada that did this style of work. First I put the picture on tracing paper and then I put it on the leather and draw it, what I'm going to do. The next step is to cut and I have this little knife, a special knife that I used to cut and then with the hammer and little metal tools go stamping or carving. And this all came from the Muslims. That's what's amazing. This didn't exist in Al-Andalus, this art, until the Muslims came. Are there many people here in Granada doing this type of work? No, no, not at all. In Granada, I don't really know of anybody else that does this so intricate and so... Um, I mean, I think I'm getting good. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think people here are aware of the Islamic roots in Andalusia? No. The majority of the people here want to kind of ignore the Islamic past and the past of Al-Andalus when it was at its height. Why are people ignoring Islamic history here? Well, first of all, they were never taught it, right? Most people my age, like the father of my kids and my friends, in the school it wasn't taught. Like the whole of Islamic history in Al-Andalus was maybe a paragraph. Right? And, you know, it, beginning there, it wasn't taught. Now it might be a chapter, right? And then maybe in the university, you might specialize in Islamic studies or something like that, but it's not taught. I wanted to visit the present day Muslim community in Granada to hear from them. Granada's mosque sits high on a hill looking across to the palace of Alhambra. It's a beautiful building and the focus of a strong Muslim community here. It's also the first new mosque to open in Granada in 500 years. And it almost didn't open at all. The mosque is quite recent. It only was open uh, 14 years ago. but. Previous to that, it, it was a period of like 23 years until from the time we bought the land until it was uh, open. In the beginning, the, the mayor, he said welcome. But uh, probably later, when the hidden forces in Granada realized that uh, the mosque in this place, they start opposing. And they were all sort of opposition, like uh, changing the purpose of the land, so instead of b being able to build like a religious building, uh, 
uh, it went to like a private housing. So it was forbidden to build here. Then we had to fight with lawyers, uh, make a, a case against the government of Andalusia. In the end, after a lot of time and money, we won the case. There were all sorts of uh, games, but it was the decree of Allah and it happened. I got a sense from Abdul Alim's story that during the long struggle to open the mosque, the community felt it had been treated as outsiders. But already it was becoming clear to me that the culture in Andalusia owes a lot to Muslim Spain at the time of La Convivencia. How often has it been said that music has the power to bring people together? The next artists I'm meeting are a fusion of music and culture, resulting in perfect harmony. The Alfredaus Ensemble is a classical group with a difference. They describe their music as a synthesis of traditions Western Classical, Arabic, Turkish, Andalusi, and Flamenco. The members of the group come from a variety of cultural and musical backgrounds. I'm watching them give a performance in Granada, opposite the fortress of Alhambra. I think uh, music, as a universal language, um, is a unique opportunity for people's of very different backgrounds, religions, to come together and express some, something beautiful. Um, and in that way, um, you have this beautiful diversity, because also all these different musical traditions, they're different, but they share elements. And I think these shared elements is what we bring out in our music. Western music and traditional Arabic songs can sound very different. But today's European musicians owe a debt to those of Al-Andalus. The first orchestras were the Andalusian orchestra. And it's interesting that the, the leader of the orchestra is also the violinist. But the, 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 the traditional violin is actually called the rabab, which is a very old um, instrument. So you have the rabab leading, and you, you find, you know, the, the, the Western classical orchestras, it's the violinist who's the head of the orchestra. When people think about the European music today, do you think they're aware of the Islamic influence? They're not so aware, maybe, of, of that influence. Now, a lot of classical musicians are exploring. And I think it is because Western classical music became so solidified, um, without any improvisation, rhythmically um, lacking, you know? So I think this means that uh, you know, classical musicians have looked east for inspiration. Religion wasn't an issue when it came to artists, you know, and, and in many professions. Musicians would be drawn together, and of course, um, they spoke the same language. The Jews, they call it Sephardic music. It's the same as, as um, Andalusi, music. Alfredos are a combination of different musical styles and a coming together of different cultures and backgrounds, a musical reminder of the kind of coexistence from the time of La Convivencia.
southern Spain is well known for its delicious food. Paella is one of my favorites. It's everywhere here in Spain. The rice they use, it was introduced to here by the Moors over a thousand years ago. To find out a bit more, I'm going to go visit a food market in Cordoba, another great city during the Moorish period. But not till I finish my lunch, of course. Cordoba was once a Roman settlement, colonized by Muslim armies in the 8th century. It was a center of culture and learning, but today I'm here to find out about the food. Diego Gil is a foodie and a tour guide. He's offered to show me around a local food market and teach me a bit about the Islamic influence on the local cuisine. We have a big, big influence in the uh, ingredients. So they bring uh, all the spices we have uh, nowadays in, in here. They also bring the aubergine, the eggplant, uh, the almonds and honey, that is the base for the, all the pastry, all the dessert that we have in here uh, is made with uh, those ingredients. And uh, also bring uh, the rice and saffron. Eh? There are the two principal uh, ingredients for the paella. And nowadays there are uh, as many paella recipes as houses there is in Spain, but all of them have rice and saffron. So the influence, it is a lot. Diego had a friend he wanted to introduce me to. Jawad Mustafa owns a Moroccan food store in Cordoba's Victoria Market. So what food are you serving here? Arab food, Arab and uh, Moroccan food. Yeah. Like uh, we have many things, uh, different, uh, different plate. We have like a principal plate, lamb, lamb with prunes and almond. This is like a historic uh, flight. And we have like couscous. This is uh, originally from Morocco. Apart this flight, we have like the kofta. Kofta, this is uh, here in Spain, uh, in Spain, it's albondigas. This is all Arabic food, yes. So who are your customers? Does everyone enjoy this type of food? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Arabic gastronomy is the origin of the very uh, important flight here in Spain. And uh, for Spanish people, the, this plate and this ingredient, it's not something uh, different. It's something, uh, it's very, it's, uh, no, it's, uh, say, from home. Uh, but uh, the, the, this, this food, everybody like this food. I've seen a lot of beautiful buildings here in Andalusia, but I haven't yet got to look inside. Luckily, the lady who lives here agreed to show me around. Salma Garaudi is the proud owner of this home, and some years ago, she opened it to the public. La Casa Andalusi is a house straight out of the 12th century. It's been restored in all its glory and features some original architecture. When I came here in Cordoba, it was in 87, 1987. And at this time, uh, the mayor of Cordoba was conscious of the importance of the city, mainly that it carries for many, many centuries you know, the Arab Islamic culture. Uh, we decided to open our house to, uh, to the public and it has been now for the past 20 years. So uh, this house is from the 12th century. And since it's not very big, you know, I wanted also to support it with uh, something cultural, also a historical uh, fact, which is very, very important, that code was not only the cradle of sciences for many centuries, but also it helped very much the expansion of culture by being the first city in Europe for making paper. Salma's house is the link to the time of La Convivencia. I wanted to know why she thought it was valuable to provide this connection for people. The most important thing in my work, you know, uh, was that Cordoba gave us an example in the history of that um, all people regarding their uh, culture or their faith, they were able to create 
a society, very, very advanced society, I'm sure that if uh, the people are sincere to create this kind of future for humanity, in generally speaking, you know, we are able to, to, to live, to, this uh, planet would be a paradise on Earth. I do different kind of dances, dance styles uh, from Middle East, Oriental dance, Egyptian folklore, and one of the, my specialities is the Andalusi dance. Nesma is a Spanish dancer and a choreographer. She uses Andalusian music and poetry in her shows, which she first discovered when she lived in Egypt. I love it, I love the music, and I think it is very, I mean, a kind, maybe a kind of, uh, I don't know, maybe inside myself there is something that, that um, tells me, like, uh, you should prove to the people, you should let in Spanish people uh, uh, everywhere know that this music is from Al-Andalus. Why do you work in this way? I felt this is something people have to know, because many Spanish people don't know about, uh, about uh, Al-Andalus history. So I wanted, I wanted to let people know about, about this. It is very difficult, you know, because sometimes, especially here in Spain, it's like people say, but what, what are you doing? Like, why don't you dance flamenco or Spanish folklore? Why do you dance this Andalusian music? What's that? I mean, it is uh, quite um, difficult. Do you think people realize the importance of Andalusian legacy? No, they don't. Of course, the roots, for sure, especially flamenco, uh, for sure uh, has something to be with Andalusian music, so it has uh, roots, but I think, no, they don't realize how, how important it was. I'm coming to the end of my time in Andalusia. Before I leave, I'm visiting Cordoba's magnificent cathedral at the very heart of the city. It's a stunning building inside and out, but it hasn't always been a Christian cathedral. For 500 years, it was a mosque built in the 8th century and expanded by successive Muslim rulers. Nestled in the heart of the present-day Catholic cathedral is a mihrab, a small chamber built into a mosque, indicating the direction of Mecca. Since the early 2000s, Spanish Muslims have asked church authorities to allow them to pray in the cathedral. So far, they haven't been successful. It's a complicated situation because legally it uh, belongs to the church. The Muslim community respects the situation. It's, um, it's part of the church. Today is a cathedral. You know, we are surrounded by the, the Islamic heart. But we respect the situation. We, we believe that uh, the, the church needs to open minds and say this has shared heritage because in the last time uh, Catholic Church said that this wasn't, this wasn't a mosque, this was only a Byzantine cathedral. The remains of the beautiful mosque deep in the heart of this cathedral are a reminder of the lasting impact of Muslim influence that the Spanish Church and the Vatican still refuse to allow Muslims to pray here seems at odds to me with the values of La Convivencia. It's been a fascinating journey uncovering Europe's Muslim roots. The influence of Islamic rule in Spain can still be felt in the food, dance, art and, of course, the music. I've met artists and musicians 
who have taught me about a shared heritage which has too often been ignored or forgotten. La Convivencia was just like any other time in history. It was complicated and of course there was conflict, but there's this idea of harmony, of coexistence back then, which has been carried through the centuries. The people I've met celebrate this idea and let it shine through in their work. Now, when Europe appears at times so divided, it seems like something to strive for.